Nigeria is arguably one of the most heterogeneous countries in the world. For a country of over 200 million people who speak over 500 different languages and are scattered across 370 ethnic groups, Nigeria can be described as a continent in a manner of speaking. As you know, it is not easy for any country to effectively manage this level of heterogeneity and Nigeria isn't an exception. In 1914, Nigeria became a single colony under British rule when the South and the North were amalgamated for the purpose of sustaining Britain's commercial interest. This marriage of convenience became legitimized in 1960, 46 years later, when we gained independence. We finally had a reins to our destiny, but we decided to continue with the Nigerian project. One of the major problems we've had since the days of our independence struggle has been that of tribalism and ethno-religious politics. In Nigeria, ethnic and religious identity hold supreme above national interest because everything is seen through the lens of group identity. Right from our leadership, tribalism trickles down to the grassroots. Tribalism in Nigeria can be subtle or crude. In some cases, it's tied to some historical antecedent. Now, say your father tells you stories of what some members of a particular group once did to his grandparents. That invariably forms a negative view you have about said group. In some cases, tribalism is based on hearsays. So, for instance, someone tells you something about Igbo people and you just believe it. You go about believing that narrative without having experienced it yourself. Or in some cases, tribalism exists when people generalize based on one of negative experiences and encounters they've had with people of certain groups. A couple of anecdotal examples perhaps will suffice. So a couple of weeks ago, I rented a new apartment. The first day I met my soon-to-be landlady, the first thing that came out of our mouth was She o kenshi o ibu. That is, I hope you are not Igbo. She made it clear that she would not rent our apartment to any Igbo person because, according to her, Igbo people are duplicitous and cannot be trusted. I asked her why. What problem does she have with an entire Igbo race? Then she narrated a one of experience she had with an Igbo tenant who ended up owing her and buying some stuff on credit, something like that. Essentially, she has formed an opinion about Igbo people based on this experience. But guess what? This happens a lot in our society. The other day, I boarded a bike and on the way, the bike man saw a scavenger who appeared to be a northerner. The scavenger was just going about his business looking for metal scraps. He wasn't disturbing anybody. But the bike man, upon sighting him, went on a rant on how much he hates northerners. This, again, unfortunately is a reality in Nigeria today. It is a reality that every tribe and religious group in Nigeria suffers stereotypes, prejudice and discrimination from other groups. Now, to be fair, not all Nigerians are like this, but on a macro scale, we see how tribalism informs the everyday choices of Nigerians. Take a look at our politics. The concept of zoning and rotational presidency exists as an exigency to assuage ethnic tensions. It is an unwritten rule that power rotates between the north and south. It is also an unwritten rule that the president and vice president cannot come from the same ethnic group and cannot share the same religion. I will argue that this structure has done nothing but fuel more ethnicity in Nigeria. Take a look at what is currently happening. As 2023 draws closer, every region is saying it is their turn to produce the next president. But if Nigeria is truly united, why should it matter which region the president comes from? This is where I blame our leaders for causing so much dividedness among Nigerians, all in the name of politics and politicking. 
Nigerians can be very sensitive to group identity, but our leaders have capitalized on this to cause more division. Religious leaders are also culpable of this. Nigeria is not for the North and South alone. Nigeria is not for Christians and Muslims alone. Nigeria is a plural country, and that means no one group owns the country. For Nigeria to truly work, we must discard all of this needless ethno-religious rivalry. We've already suffered incalculable losses due to tribalism and it hasn't gotten us anywhere. Now, this is not to say that each group should not be proud of their cultural heritage. My point is, as a people, we can work towards attaining unity in diversity because our pluralism is meant to be our greatest strength instead of the weakness we've made it to be. Thanks for watching and let me know what you guys think. Do share your thoughts below. Remember that as Nigerians, we all want the same thing out of life, irrespective of tribe or religion. So there is no justification for tribalism. Till next time, stay safe.